Good morning, everybody, and welcome to VG Myths. Sorry, Game Champ. Looks like I'm taking over for today. Good morning, and welcome to my quest to save as much money as possible. Those Spidey suits are expensive, you know. In Marvel's Spider-Man, you play as Peter Parker, who struggles to make his ends meet and gets his world turned upside down. So, basically a regular Spider-Man. So to help poor Peter out, we're gonna ask ourselves the question, can you beat Spider-Man PS4 without taking a single hit of damage? The rules are pretty simple. If we take any hit of damage while playing, we must reset to the last checkpoint. You also must play on spectacular difficulty or higher. You may not purchase any in-game upgrades for either yourself or your gadgets. And finally, you are not allowed to buy the last two gadgets in the shop since the game does not actually force you to buy them. Before the run starts, it's best that I explain what taking damage is, or at least what it means to me. Whenever you get hit in the game, you see that your life bar and your total health number goes down with it. Which thankfully Insomniac included the number system, it makes her life just a little bit easier. With the stage set and a long journey ahead of us, we begin on Mission 1 Clearing the Way. Mission 1 is a pretty basic tutorial level that introduces us to the mechanics of the game and how to swing in the city. Once we interrupt what looked to be a Call of Duty-like level, we get into our first fight with the NPCs. Throughout this level, we are given tips on how to play the game and what we have to use at our disposal, such as web strikes that allow you to get closer to your enemy. It's the first level, so we should have absolutely no trouble in- <laughs> Yeah, I haven't played this game in months, and something that I forgot is that if an enemy is within a few feet from you, their models will slide when punching and it begins to throw you off. Well, after that, like the rules said, we have to reset from the beginning of the fight. To make this video interesting, I'll have a reset counter so you guys can keep track of how many times I absolutely suck at this game. After two more resets are added to the count, we are introduced to the gun type enemy. Their bullets are easy enough to dodge on their own, but as time goes on, I have a feeling that will change. Now moving on to mission 2, after making quick work of Fisk's goons, we head over to help everyone's favorite moody officer, Yuri. After dodging what should have been an impossible barrage of bullets, we head inside and make ourselves at home. A good tip to avoid randomly getting shot by the police is to make sure you take an immediate right in the start of the stage and follow down that path toward the enemies. During this initial fight, you should be aware of how many guys are around you. If too many are close and try attacking you, one single dodge can only do so much. So with another three resets added to the count, we move deeper into the building and completely carry the NYPD's weight by filling the floor with bodies. Oh yeah, add another reset while we're at it too. After busting Kingpin's attempt to wipe evidence, ranking up another two resets and saving some civilians, we are met with our first couple of rocket enemies. Out of all the types, I believe that they are the second easiest to dodge since the game gives you a fair amount of time to dodge and the attack does not track after being fired. After two resets and a reassessment of the police system, we enter Fisk's domain, and thank god the defense systems are completely garbage, even in video games. So just dodge the barrage of bullets and then web up a turret and throw it at Fisk's glass wall. Then do the same for the other. All right, for the actual Fisk boss fight, there are two phases. For the first phase, after throwing the table back at him, what you'll want to do is hit Fisk three to four times depending on the animation that you get. Jump off of him by using your X on your last hit, use an entire web cartridge to web them up, then land down and repeat the process. This method allows you to be in the least risk when taking the big guy on. After that, an animation will play, and then you'll move on to the last phase. Now for the last phase, Fisk will call on his goons. The best way to finish this is to just ignore Fisk and focus on getting the number of enemies to nobody besides Fisk. Then repeat the first phase method until you finish the fight. After five resets and putting Fisk behind bars, we end our first level and move on to Mission 3, my other, other job. Mission 3 is a story focused level where we learn that Peter Parker is currently working with Dr. Otto Octavius, so after using my expert science skills, I kind of skipped everything, we move right on to Mission 4, keeping the peace. Mission 4 is thankfully just a petty crime mission, so there's no real threat to us present, however, we are introduced to the control towers. In Marvel's Spider-Man, control towers allow you to see all activity in the city and down the line will let you fast travel. So I suggest you fix all of them to make the end game a lot less stressful on yourself. Mission 5, something old, something new. Mission 5 gives us one of the best Spider-Man moments of all time. No question about it. Suits 
Same old me. Mission six, Fisk's hideout. After getting our new suit, Yuri gives us a heads up that a Fisk construction site has been pretty suspicious. We decide that it's in our best interest to check it out. Fisk's hideout is the first level that gives us an option to either brute force our way or safely pick off the crowd in order to have a better time. Using the stealth option, pick off your opponents one by one until the game forces the enemies to be alert of you. Then start using gadgets and interactables. With the cleanup done and the cops on the way, we breeze past the stage with no resets needed. Mission 7 Landmark and Mission 8 for She's a Jolly Good Fellow. Both missions are once again story related so there's no need for any action at all. Mission 8, however, introduces us to a man named Martin Lee who is the nicest guy in the world and couldn't possibly have a bad bone in his body. Mission 9, Don't Touch the Earth. Mission 9 is a combination of a stealth and an MJ level. I was never a fan of the human levels, but for this run, I'll take hiding over fighting any day. Once MJ's portion is done, the game reveals the inner demons to us. They seem to be one of the gangs Fisks was talking about. Mm, they could cause some problems for us in the future with their energy swords and attacks, but after one reset, we make sure MJ can escape safely and move on to Mission 10. Mission 10, A Shocking Combat. As you can probably guess, this mission involves a chase sequence with the Shocker. Thankfully, the dev has made it super easy to dodge his attacks as he flees, but I would suggest you take a back seat a little bit in order to make sure that he doesn't get any cheap shots. Taking him down was a little too easy though. I doubt this will be the last time we see him. Mission 11, The Mask. Mission 11 is another story level. I'm beginning to think Martin Lee isn't telling us something. I don't know what it is. Every time I see him, I just get this negative feeling. Eh? Uh, yeah, I'll stop. Mission 12, A Day to Remember, and Mission 13, Harry's Passion Project. These two levels are once again story-based and where we see Otto's work taken from him. Yeah, Norman, that's totally not gonna bite you in the ass later. One funny thing that I found out is that if you just walk away from Harry's environment stations, it just moves the story along. You don't even have to touch a single station in the game. So as Game Champ would say, we're gonna take it and throw it in the trash. Probably gonna get copyright claim because of that. Mission 14, Financial Shock. Financial Shock is the second and final Shocker fight in the game, which has three phases. For his first phase, wait for Shocker to shoot a blast at you three times. So then fire a huge wave around himself, which leaves him vulnerable. Throw debris at him and attack. After a few smacks, he'll go into phase two. His second phase is the same as the first, except that after three shots, he'll jump into the air and smack his fist down, causing a shock wave. Swing to avoid it, throw a rock once again. After smacking him around, he'll go into the third final phase. After four of his blasts, he'll stop shooting which gives you time to pull the pillars down and literally drop the roof on him. After two resets, we push Shocker behind bars for good. Mission 15, Wheels Within Wheels. Rest is for the weak. After investigating a Fisk warehouse, teaming up with Officer David, snapping a quick photo, stopping all the inner demons from stealing Fisk's weapons, and making Miles' dad a hero to the public, we move on to Mission 16 with no resets. Mission 16, Home Sweet Home. Mission 16 is another story-based level. We're in a little bit of trouble since we've been evicted and now we have to go chase down a spidey bag that we need. However, it does give us access to a super useful gadget. The web bomb allows us to web up a huge crowd of enemies in order to make our workload in this run less stressful and overall more manageable. Mission 17, Stakeout, and Mission 18, Couch Surfing. Both Mission 17 and 18 are story levels once again, so there's no need for resets. Although we do take a hit by sleeping on a homeless shelter's couch because we were kicked out. Mission 19, Straw, Meat Camel. Mission 19 starts us out searching an industrial site full of Fisk's men held hostage by demons. We make quick work of the inner demons and after FaceTime with Willie, we are tasked with saving the rest of his men in exchange for info on the boss. The mission itself isn't too difficult. It contains all enemy types we've encountered plus a new brute enemy who isn't that difficult to deal with after some practice. After five resets, four being during the side battle and one on the helicopter chase, we stop the inner demons and even manage to capture one of them. Although talking doesn't seem like an option. So with the city safe once again, we get to sit back and watch Officer Davis get an award for his bravery and things are starting to look... Mission 20, and the award goes to. Mission 20 is a Miles level where we deal with the aftermath of Martin Lee's terrorist attack and see him go into a deep depression. The loss of his father was a huge blow for him, and now New York must deal with another heart shattering tragedy. No resets to be had. And with that, we move on to Act 2. Act 2, Mission 21, Dual Purpose. 
After the attack at the mayor's speech, Yuri doesn't believe us when we try to tell her that it was Martin Lee who was in charge of the entire operation. MJ gives us a heads up that Lee has been doing some sneaky business and bought some recycling centers which could be where he's hiding. We arrived at the scene to find that the area has been guarded by demons. After some beatdown on the enemies and one reset, we infiltrate the base and find out that Lee has been using the site for planning bomb attacks and stores stolen Fisk tech. It also seems that Lee is focusing on attacking Norman Osborne. I wonder why. After checking out another base location, we run into some company, and after six admittedly annoying resets, we move on to mission 22. Oh, before we move on though, I thought it'd be a good time to give a tip for those attempting this challenge. If there is a large group of enemies and you're about to get hit, use one of your focus meter bars to perform an instant takedown move that not only knocks out an enemy, but gives you temporary invincibility while the animation plays out, giving you some pressure time to think about what to do next or potentially how to dodge the attack that you didn't see up until then. Alright, now back to the story. Well, most of you don't know is that after mission 21, we are introduced to Silver Sable and her army who was hired by Norman for the purpose of tracking down Lee. These Sable goons are no joke and make the levels that they are in absolutely nightmare for us to complete in a no hit run. Mission 22, Hidden Agenda. Maybe it's time to check out Martin Lee and see if he's got anything to hide. After finding a burn room with the Devil's Breath file inside, we walk out of the room and bump into Martin who is all too suspicious of who we are and what we just saw. Thankfully, May is able to get us out of conflict and a potential fight. However, Lee sends his mind-controlled goons after us, and we get to see firsthand of what his power of corruption does to people, and it's a dangerous thing. Mission 23, a fresh start. Mission 23 is another Peter story-based level where we learn of Otto's rapid motor function loss, and we get to see the evolution of his limb replacement technology. This could change lives. Mission 24, Dinner Date. Dinner Date is a very basic MJ level and at the end we learn of a guy named Charles Standish who works for Osborne and could potentially know about Devil's Breath. However, his place of work is being raided by demons so we better get there quick before Charles Standish is Charles Down-ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever, I'll stop. No resist to be had, let's just keep going. Oh no, these are labeled wrong. <laughs> Mission 25, up their water spout. We arrive at the building Charles is in to find that the parking lot is absolutely filled with demons. With some help from our gadgets and some smooth dodging, we take them all down and use the elevator shaft to climb up the building undetected. Entering Stanish's room, we see that the demons have locked him inside his office and are forcing him to give some information. So with some stealth and instant takedowns, we wipe out the room and get to Standish. A helicopter attack in the building forces us to jump out of the elevator shaft. Saving Standish, we finish the level with Charles completely safe and hand him over to Sable's team. Zero resets and we move on to mission 26. Mission 26, what's in the box? Mission 26 has a check out a bomb on a rooftop that is hinted to be a bomb. However, when we arrive, it turns out to be that Taskmaster is behind this and he has a challenge for us to complete. However, just like the Harry stations, it's completely optional and we can move on to mission 26 with no resets added to the counter. Mission 27, back to school. MJ mentioned to us that Delaney was somebody who worked on Devil's Bread, so it might be in our best interest to go find him at ESU. Lucky for us, we have the perfect suit for this event since it's close to Halloween and there's a costume party going on right now. So we take our best red and blue suit to the party and find out that Delaney is just up as one of the three villains in the photo. Going down the list, Mysterio turns out to be a student in a sick cosplay, and Vulture is a random teacher from the school. However, he does inform us that Delaney is actually just up as the lizard and is on the dance floor. <sighs> Sadly for us, a guy in a rhino costume distracts us and the demons take Delaney inside the school. I guess it's time to follow him to make sure that they don't do anything to him. After entering ESU, we see that the demons have taken some hostages. So after one reset, we free the civilians, crawl into the vent, and take out more demons. We finally get to the lady who is currently being interrogated by Lee for information on his partner Morgan Michaels from Oscorp. We get there, but it's too late. Mr. Negative pins us down, gets the name from Delaney, then forces Isaac to kill himself. Lee flees the scene and we make quick work of the guards he's left behind. As we get out of the building, the ESU campus has turned into a huge free-for-all and most students have been corrupted by Mr. Negative, including the Rhino guy from earlier. The fight began with a super cheap grab that forces us to add another reset to the count. A good strategy for this portion of the fight is to immediately tag the guy who intends to grapple you as you spawn. Then you can shift your focus on the other students. For this portion of the fight, the students all go down in 3 hits or you can use your gadgets to web up multiple people if it gets too hectic for you. The Rhino student acts like the Kingpin so all you have to do is web him up, attack repeatedly without letting up, and when it's time to press the strike button, an animation will play that ends the mission. With us informing Yuri about Michaels, we end the level with 2 resets added to the counter. Mission 28, Spider Hack. Morgan might be crucial to stopping Devil's Breath, but with Sable hiding him and a potential secret lab for Devil's Breath, I think it's time we pay Norman Osborne a visit and see what we can steal from his files. The level starts us off with sneaking into Oscorp Industries from the outside by blacking out the building. 
We get spotted once, so add that to the counter. And after getting to the top, we sneak in and find the files on Norman's computer about the information on Devil's Breath. Turns out, it was originally designed to cure any genetic disease. But as it is right now, it's practically a bioweapon. Morgan Michaels carries around the only sample with him, so it's important that we find him as soon as possible. But it seems that MJ is already trying to find him. Mission 29, uninvited. It's another MJ level that ends with her getting mad that Peter can't trust her to do anything on her own, even though she was the one putting herself in danger. She's mad at us right now, but she still gives us information that Morgan is getting moved by Sable Guards the next day at noon. No resets, and we walk into Mission 30. Mission 30, Strong Connections. Another test by Otto, huh? I wonder what he's got in store for us. We learn of Otto's rapid motor function loss, and we see the evolution of the limb replacement technology. Otto doesn't take care of himself. He could turn into something different. No resets. Mission 31, first day. Miles decided that helping those in need would be a good way to get his mind off of his father. He learns the ropes on how to fight and when he gets to feast, we settle in pretty quickly and move on to mission 32 with no resets. Mission 32, collision course. Michaels begins his transport and surprise, surprise, they're ambushed by Martin Lee, taking the doctor and the devil's breath. It looks like it's up to us to get it back. This tank isn't gonna be an easy thing to take down. Not only are there demons shooting at us, but they also have rockets that can be launched when we get too close. A good tip to follow is that when you initially swing, do not follow directly behind the tank. Take a right and it should let you avoid being in the gun's line of sight, allowing you to easily hop on the vehicle and start taking down the demons. I didn't figure this out that quick though, so I racked up a whopping 4 resets before I figured it out. The easiest way to knock them down is to launch them up into the air and aim your throw so that when they land, it'll be off the tank. Is it heroic? No, but it makes our life so easier, so I'll choose to close my eye just once. After clearing the top of the tank, more enemies will spawn in cars and we gotta make sure to knock them out. Just be careful after you stop the first car because the second one will immediately start firing, so be prepared to dodge quick. After we hop back on, we deal with a whip enemy that gives us one reset and after all that, we finally get to Lee's tank. We try taking the devil's breath back, but Mr. Negative manages to touch us and try to corrupt us. After some monologue from Lee, he'll send an onslaught of negative souls towards us. It took me 18 resets to learn of a way to beat this boss battle, and here's how. As soon as you spawn in, web zip to the light pole and stay there. Yes, I'm serious. The runner enemies can't reach you and all the whip and sword souls can be taken out with the spider drone or your other gadgets. For the second phase, it's million times easier than the beginning. To start, make sure that you deal with the whip soul, then stay in the air for as long as possible, ignoring the runners and throwing projectiles back to the mask. After about four throws, we are taken out of the dream sequence and back into real life. Two more resets, by the way. After stopping the tank in his tracks, we find out that Morgan is safe and sound, but it looks like they took devil's breath. We hand Michael over to Sable and that brings an end to mission 32. Mission 33, the one that got away. The one that got away is an MJ and Spider-Man hybrid level. The first half of it being MJ's part is fairly easy and the game gives us control to call down Peter from above to take down demons. After disarming the Devil's Breath bomb and getting the civilians to safety, MJ leaves the scene and we take control of Spidey. After a wave of thugs and one reset, we now set our sights on Lee who is trying to flee on train. This Mr. Negative boss fight is more of a reactive fight so I can't really help, but as long as you're patient and memorize what movements correspond with the attack, you should be fine. Another thing to know is that you can safely hit him three times and after the third hit lands, use the dodge button and hold back to gain some distance in order to prepare for the next wave of attacks. After six resets, we knock Martin Lee out, stop the train, Spider-Man 2, never mind, own Insomniac style, and finally put Martin Lee behind bars. Mission 34, breakthrough. Oh, Otto's built tentacles as a way to evolve human limbs? There's too many problems with this. You can't possibly expect to go through it. Yes. For the first time in my life, I don't feel like a failure. I feel like me. Let's at least work out the problems first before anything. It's okay, Doc. We're close. You have no idea what you're in for. Mission 35, Reflection. Reflection shows us the good that Feast can bring out in people, and in this case, Miles. Oh no. The Devil's Breath has been stolen? This is bad. Mission 36, Out of the Frying Pan. Trouble at Rikers again. The cells have been opened and the inmates are on the loose all over the prison. The only tip I can give is to make sure you use your instant takedown gadgets on the enemies with guns and use the web bomb when a group of inmates are too close to each other. After a whopping 9 resets, we meet Electro who quickly says hi by crashing our plane. When we land, Yuri splits, leaving us to drop the prisoners. After 4 resets, we continue to find Electro and OH sh Well, at least it's only 2 of those. Oh, this is getting really annoying. As I was saying, after clearing up some shield type enemies, we begin our chase with Electro. It's nothing too special and actually gets pretty fu- ah! Vulture! Long time no see! 
We're going to have so much fun! Ugh, whatever. I don't get paid enough for this. After one reset, we finish the level. Oh my god. Is that awkward? <laughs> Each of you has a job to do. Your debts will be repaid when we're done. Go! There he is! Act 3, Mission 35, Into the Fire. City's a mess. Oh my god. All right, we have to focus. Electro and Rhino are attacking two police stations. The best course of action is to get Rhino first and then we can deal with Electro. Out of the entire run, taking these two out is the worst for a no hit run. It's raining bullets, fires everywhere, all types of enemies. And if you don't do it in one clean shot, you have to reset. And that starts you from the very beginning and you have to do it all over again. After one reset, we move on to the rooftop portion of the Rhino counter. And this marks the absolute worst time I've had while playing the game. The best way to go about this is to make sure to leave one enemy on each rooftop. Once you've cleared two roofs, Sable's men will show up so you want as much breathing room as possible. Activate your suit powers to gain focus and use the instant takedowns on both shield men. Doing this should help you win. It took me 17 resets and some tears in order to figure that one out. After cleaning up after Rhino's leftovers, we head over to the other precinct where Electro has trapped everybody inside using transformers to electrify the building. Thankfully this is nowhere near as hard as Rhino's portion. After taking out the Transformers and defeating the rest of the goons, Lee left us. We are left with four more resets added to the counter. But that's the least of our worries. MJ, Miles, and May need our help at Feast, and we gotta get there quick. We managed to save MJ, May, and Miles, but then they end up saving us. After a big pep talk, we get our motivation back, and we're ready to take back this city. And I do mean we. It's gonna take Parker, MJ, and Miles to take this city back. Mission 36, picking up the trail. Devil's Breath was released in Times Square, so if we want to find Otto, I guess the best thing to do is track down the dispersal trail. After finding the end of the trail and no Otto, we begin to investigate the building to find something that can lead us in the right direction. Huh. Audio files for all six with the reasons why they joined the team. Oh, finally we find a map detailing Otto's plan for the gang and something called Icarus. I wonder what that could- TACTICAL NUKE INCOMING! Of course, why am I not surprised? Oh, come on, Vulture again? All right, that's it. I'm putting an end to this old geezer. Oh, and Electro's here too. Good. Two birds with one stone. The Vulture and Electro boss fight is fairly simple once you've broken down the components. The fight begins with Electro and all you have to do is web him up and attack. When he hovers above the Transformer, destroy it with your webs, and after that, you'll move on to the Vulture phase. Pay attention to when Vulture dashes at you. Dodge, then web strike to get close and attack him. Vulture will pause after the initial couple of attacks and then dash again, and you just have to repeat this process. After the second rep, we move on to the third phase of the fight, which is the first two phases combined into one. To start it off easy, it's best to focus on one individual boss instead of shifting back and forth. A useful thing to know is that when Vulture and Electro are throwing projectiles, they can hit and stun each other. For me, it was easier to take care of Vulture and after a few reps of hits, he flies away, letting us shift our focus back to one boss. When Electro has taken enough damage, a cutscene will play that takes him out of the fight permanently and brings Vulture back into the fight. Repeat the same strategy as before with focusing on Vulture and after a while, he and Electro will be taken to Rikers once again. Two down, ten resets, next mission. Streets of Poison Scorpion's plan to poison the water supply from earlier was a trap and now we have to deal with a bunch of hallucinations. Thankfully most are harmless story related ones, however at about the halfway point they throw in scorpion tails as you maneuver which can catch you off guard but aren't hard to dodge. Just as we're about to finish making the cure for the poison, we are thrown into a mini boss fight with a huge group of scorpions. An easy way to beat this is to use your suit power right away to start generating focus. A focus attack on him will instantly kill one of the hallucinations. Also, don't forget to use your web gadgets. They also work in webbing Scorpion up and letting you attack him. After four resets, we make the cure and end up in our undies? Next mission, next mission! A human level! Ew! Heavy hitter. Ah, oh, that's better. And would you look at that? A level where you can beat up Rhino! Yay! Just like old times. The first phase is super easy. Just lead the big guy into the construction clause and you'll easily move on to the final phase. Oh yay! Scorpion's here too! That's another two birds! For this fight, your life will be easier if you just go after Scorpion first since he throws projectiles. Then after that, you can handle Rhino. Eventually, the two idiots will start fighting each other and at the end, battle themselves. 
Four down, six resets, and only Martin Lee and Otto are left. Step into my parlor. Final human mission in the game. There's no resets, but we do find out what the devil's breath is and what happened to Lee's parents. <laughs> Well, I gotta go, bye. Is there a spider on my The heart of the matter. Okay, now we know where the serum is, but we need to get there fast. But it looks like Martin's goons are already there and they have Norman. Starting the level off, it's best if you wipe out the sniper since they are the ones that are most hazardous for the no hit run. Using all the strategies you've learned from the previous levels and with 13 resets, we make our move into the lab, make the stable tolerate us, and set off to find Mr. Negative and get the anti serum. After Lee takes us back to his negative world and we escape with knowledge on how his power works, it looks like it's time for one last fight with Martin. The boss battle starts off pretty simple. He uses wider attacks that are similar to those he used during the train fight. Lee will use up most of his negative energy when he releases attacks, so wait for the opening and hit him when he's stunned. About halfway, he'll go full on negative and he'll show his inner demon. Once again, this phase is a callback to the tank chase level with the goons being spawned in all around us. The only difference is that now Lee will summon his inner demon to launch a sweeping attack. Keep dodging and running away from the souls until Martin begins to tire himself out and use that time to land some hits on him. If he's stunned but there are too many enemies around, use your web bomb to stop the souls from moving and you will have time to hit him. After three resets, defeating our inner demons and securing the cure and saving Norman, we- <laughs> Packs in the bellow. What can we do now? May sick? Otto is just too strong and we took the beating of our lives. Can the run go on like this? If Spider-Man can't beat him, then what hope do we have of saving everybody? What am I saying? After all the hoops, all the resets, all the pain, sweat, and tears that have gone into making this run possible, we can't end it here. Maybe Otto's too strong, but that doesn't mean we can't even the odds. There's no turning back. The final act is upon us, and we will do what it takes to save New York, because we are Spider-Man. The final boss fight was a true test of willpower. The best way to tackle it is to wait till Otto begins throwing debris at you, web them up back his way and go in for the attack. After three cycles of this, he will move into phase two where he incinerates the entire Oscorp roof. Once again, web throw his attacks back at him and you will throw him off the tower. Then you have to repeat this step two more times. After those rotations are up, we'll get thrown into the side of the Oscorp tower with another 36 resets added to the counter. Give Otto the beating of a lifetime, learn a valuable lesson about trust, grieve over Aunt May's death, get back together with MJ, and learn that Miles has powers, then give yourself a pat on the back. Because after your 169 resets, the Spider-Man no-hit run is mission complete!